Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A Plus certification training course on installing and configuring cooling systems. I'm James Messer. In this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our 220.702 section 1.1, where we need to understand how to install, configure, and maintain computer cooling systems. It's one of the critical components inside of your computer is keeping things cool. One of the ways that we do this is on the processors themselves. We need to cool down the CPUs that are inside of our computer. If we have the CPUs already installed, you want to be sure you get your thermal grease on there. We talked about this during the installation of these processors, that video, where we talked about wanting to make sure that there was no air that could possibly be in these tiny little pits and components between our CPU and our heat sink itself. So make sure you're using your thermal grease to create a air-free zone. So we're getting the best possible transfer of heat off of the processor and directly onto the heat sink. Once that's in place, we can put the heat sink in place. And usually there are some metal straps that will connect it quite tightly to the processor components that are on your motherboard. So it wraps right around there and connects your heat sink directly on top of those processors on your system. In this particular case, these particular processors get pretty hot. So we have more than just a heat sink. We actually have fans that we place right on top of them as well. And the fans are powered with little power connectors that are right next to the processors on this motherboard, which makes it very easy. These fans are also designed to clip exactly right on top of these particular heat sinks. They come as one component. So we know we've got now a fan that's designed for a heat sink, a heat sink that's designed to sit right on top of this kind of processor. And we've got all the power we need to make sure that we're going to cool down that CPU by putting that cool air right on top of those particular heat sinks. Now, of course, we need more fans inside of our computer and more cooling system than what's right on top of the processors. We have other components inside of our computer that get hot as well. So we need to be able to also pull cool air through the entire case. Let's look at what we need to be able to do this. First, we need to understand our case and understand what slots are available for these fans. And there will be some standard size uh, fan slots. You'll see an 80 millimeter, a 92 millimeter, 120 millimeter, and there's different kinds in between to be able to get just the right size fan into your case. We also need to look at the features of these fans. Some fans can look and work in conjunction with a temperature sensor. So if your computer is running relatively cool, it can slow down the RPMs and be a little bit quieter. And as your computer gets hotter, it'll speed up so that your computer is able to cool a little bit better. Some fans have lights on them. Lights, well, yes, it's not there to light the inside of your computer. Instead, it's if you're looking outside of your computer, it looks cool. It's a nice little addition to your case so that people can see your case and go, wow, look at you. You've got neon colors, reds and greens coming out from the back of your computer or the front of your computer where the fan happens to be. And if you're doing a case mod and you'd like to soup up how your case looks, it's one of the ways you could do it by having a fan that actually has lights inside of it. If you're concerned about noise, you should also look. Here's a, a great website I reference, silentpcreview.com has some really nice tips and components that you might want to consider because some fans will run cooler and quieter than others. Some fans are, are designed for silence so that you could have a fan that's there spinning and have very, very little amount of noise coming out of it. If you're doing something like this where you're recording a video or audio, maybe you're doing podcasting, having a very quiet computer might be really important. So that may be a good resource for you to go to to understand how should I take advantage of a less noisy system and components. Make sure my computer is not overwhelming me with the amount of noise coming out of that computer. So once you've chosen that fan, here's what it comes with. You've got the fan, and you've got power for the fan. It has to be powered some way, of course, and the screws that you're going to use to attach the fan onto the case itself. One thing you should look at on the fan is how the air flows through it. In almost all cases, you're not blowing air into your computer. You've actually got your fan facing outward. So that is pulling cool air from the inside of your computer. And the fan is used as the exhaust point. So have a look at the lines on here, and you'll be able to see and these arrows indicate the direction in which the fan rotates and the direction in which the air comes through the fan. You don't want to put the fan in backwards or else you're going to be creating a problem, especially if you have more than one fan. You don't want them to be fighting with each other. All of the air should be flowing through in one direction. Sometimes you're putting on more than one fan. You'd be putting on 
maybe two fans. And you can see here, I've got this configured to blow the air out the side and it goes out this particular connection on the other end. And I'll put another fan in on exactly the same way. We'll use those screws I have to screw them right on to this metal mounting bracket and they'll fit right into the middle, in this case, of the, the case that I have that I'm putting all of my different components in. When we're thinking about airflow, we were talking earlier about making sure the air flows through properly. There's a number of things we should think about. First, let's look at the motherboard type. We may get a motherboard that is a newer style. Maybe there is a newer type of motherboard that allows for better airflow through your computer. Sometimes people like to get very small motherboards, but some of the challenges with that is that the smaller motherboards may have more components in a tighter space and may actually be hotter than if you got a motherboard that was spread out a little bit. So just something to keep in mind. You also want to look at how many different components you have. If you have one hard drive or four hard drives, do you have a big video card inside of that that puts off a lot of heat? Do you have multiple CPUs? Those types of things will put off a lot of heat inside of your computer. So you also want to consider when you're adding fans and cooling systems that you're really able to cool for the total amount of heat coming off of your system. The wiring is also something you should consider because if you recall from our videos on installing hard drives, paddock cables were these really wide ribbon cables. And if you have multiples of those in a computer, they take up a lot of space and they'll stop airflow from going through your computer. SATA drives have these very, very small data cables. And so by replacing a PATA drive with a SATA drive, you may be freeing up a lot of room inside of your computer and actually getting a cooler computer also as part of the deal. You want to look at the size of the fans. Some fans will also run at different speeds than others. So make sure you're taking advantage of a fan that gives you the right amount of airflow without creating more noise than you might happen to need. If you have a laptop, the, the type of cooling and the fans and all of these things working together become even more important because laptops get very hot and it's a very confined space. You want to make sure that you're keeping the airflow as good as possible through that laptop so that the temperatures inside of that laptop stay at the very nominal requirements to be able to work properly. If we were then to then look at our computer, we can start to see places where the fan is blowing out the warm air and air is being sucked in the front of the computer. There's no fans here. The air is just being sucked in the cool air using the fans that are already in place. There may be fans also on our CPUs or other components, and it may also be pulling air into the system. And then we've got these sections on the back where the air is flowing out the back side. If there are slots in place for some of the adapter cards you're using, you don't want to leave those open. If there's not an adapter card there, it may disrupt the flow of air that's going through your computer. So make sure that the flow of air is unobstructed and make sure that it's flowing through and there's nothing in the way between the front and the back of the computer and it's able to flow properly across and against all of those very, very hot components. The location where you put your case becomes pretty important then. If it's on the floor and there's not a lot of air that's able to flow through, that may be an issue. If it's up in a warehouse, for instance, where the warehouse is always hot, that may be a challenge as well. Especially if the warehouse gets a lot of dust and a lot of debris, you want to be sure it's not clogging up any of those openings in the front or the back of your computer. You want to make sure your fan doesn't have a lot of dust on it or else it's not going to be able to pull air through quite as efficiently. You may want to get a portable vacuum in there. Uh, if you have to, maybe get compressed air. That makes a little bit more of a mess. And sometimes uh, it has to be done because all of this dust is on components that you really don't want to touch directly. And so you want to be sure you're getting rid of all of the dust. If you're working on a computer, be sure you clean all that dust out before you send it back to the end user. And you may want to check the temperature very often. In our troubleshooting episode for our cooling systems, we're going to go through a number of pieces of software and hardware that are able to, to have an idea of what the temperature is inside of your computer. Those sensors are always checking on your processors inside of your computer, in your hard drives, and you're able to monitor those if you have the right software. Let's see what we can remember about installing and configuring our cooling systems. Our first question is, what is the most popular method for cooling a computer? Certainly one of the most common methods for cooling a computer is using air. Just blow cool air in through the computer and have that air, the hot air, come out the other side. It's what's used on almost every single personal computer you'll see out there. How does this air-cooled computer work? Well, we just described it. The, the idea is that we're pulling in cool air and we're pushing out the warm air. 
It's not a situation where we're just throwing in as much cool air as possible. We don't want to overwhelm the inside of our computer or make it so the fan has to work harder because there's not the proper amount of airflow. It's much easier if your fan is pulling air out of your computer. Pull the warm air out, and it's naturally going to pull the, the cool air in on the other side. How can you check the temperature of your computer? Well, there's a few ways to do that. The easiest way is to grab the right type of software and be able to look at what the sensors inside of your computer are telling you should be very, very easy to tell at that point what the temperature is of your processors, of your hard drives, and maybe of some other components inside of your computer as well. That covers what we needed to know about our 220.702 Section 1.1, where we needed to install, configure, and maintain cooling systems. If you'd like to see many more of our a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.